another fight that we're all looking forward to this weekend. Heavyweight fight that's got everybody talking. Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. <laughs> Shane McGuigan. What do you make of Iron Mike's return to the ring? I thought we were going to talk about the, the one that we are actually all looking forward to. Um, I don't even want to talk about it. The fact that it's a no, you know, it's, it's going to be a no contest and there's no knockouts. It's a bit of a farce. So should we talk about the real one? Let's talk about the real. I just wanted to set you okay. up for that one. Dubois versus Joyce. Um, massive domestic fight. I'm really excited about it. I know you will be too. Talk to me about the fight. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. I think, you know, Dubois, a, you know, he's, a, he's an absolute beast. You know, he's, he's, he's got lots of momentum, but albeit at a lower level. Joe Joyce has boxed much better opposition. Um, and, you know, he's, he's had fights where he's looked very beatable and then other fights that he's looked like he's a wrecking machine. So I'm excited. I think this is a really good fight. I think Joe's got to be switched on early. And Daniel's got to try and dent him as much as he can early. Um, and I think once, if it gets past four rounds, it's going to be an exciting fight. Now you've had Daniel in the gym, obviously, to spar Lawrence Acoli, Chris Billum smith You make a good point there about the rounds. There seems to be everybody's kind of prediction is Dubois early or potentially Joyce late. Any indications that, that there may be a struggle with the gas tank from Daniel Dubois based on what you've seen in the gym? No, Dan Daniel's very fit and he's very, you know, like, he's, he's very um, poised. You know, he's got, he's got a good, mature head on him. Um, I just think that he's not known for his punch output. He's known for his punch power, and the longer the rounds go, everyone will obviously feel like he, you know. Can he can he continue to turn this to, to turn the lights off late late on in a, a fight? You know, um, I can't remember who it was. Was it was it uh, Johnson? Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson. Yeah, he, he just looked a bit one paced. You know, he looked a bit like uh, <laughs> methodical and like. That is so such a relief, isn't it? When that sound yeah, they turned it off forty-five minutes into the interview. Yeah, they turned the uh, the sound off ages. Should have turned that off ages ago, Chris. <laughs> anyway, uh, and uh, yeah, I just think you know sometimes he's he's, he's looked a little bit methodical, but um, at the same time he's super super dangerous. Um, and yeah, I just you know bet the, you got Joe Joyce who looked. I didn't think he looked very good against Bryant Jennings. But um, but he's done so much in the amateurs. He's so seasoned. He's 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 travelled around the bloody world. Even as a pro, he's travelled around the world. He's been to Salas's gym in the states and stuff like that. He's done a lot of. He's trained out in Big Bear. He's trained with um, Adam Booth. He's you know he's 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 seen a lot of people and he's done a lot of work with me in the past. Um, Big Joe, I, I trained him a lot back in 2013 and 2014 before the Commonwealth Games and stuff. So I know how effective he is um, so it's a real it's a really interesting fight expand on that because it's the first time you've mentioned it on camera so let's talk about the period of time that you trained Joe Joyce or that you, you spent with Joe Joyce just talk us a little bit through that how you feel he's different now compared to what he was when you had him yeah but you know he it was a, it was 2013 um, and then you know he, he, he wants to go to the Olympics but he said look can I keep coming in and do some pads and stuff and I was like yeah no problem so Quite a lot of weekends he would come in and we would do pads and um, and you know and I, I sort of said to him after the Commonwealth Games I said I think you should look to turn pro um, because obviously because of his age and um, and I, you know you can wait another two years and, and not get the not get the gold which is exactly what happened and not get the the credit you know there's there's one Anthony Joshua because he's boxed. And got a gold medal in, in the Olympics and all of the endorsements and everything off the back of it. He's a very marketable guy. But the fact is that he won it in London. It wasn't quite the same going out to, to Rio. And, um, you know, and, and it didn't really, even though it was obviously an Olympic silver medal, it, it, it hadn't really progressed his um, stature almost or in terms of like his, his uh, future earning potential and stuff like that. So, um, but no, you know, we uh, we had a discussion after the Olympics as well, and um, we I sort of said, look, you know, um, we'll, we'll go our separate ways here and stuff. And I've got a lot of respect for for Joe. He's he's open, upfront, and honest. And I think you know, he's um, he's yeah, he's 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 done a lot in a short space of time, and he's boxed to Vern Jennings. You know what I mean? Even Ian Lewis and that early on in his fight, he's willing to take the risks and jump in there. And he's, you know, he's known for his punch out, but he's known for his, his 
granite chin, the fact that he's big lump, high work rate. Um, and if he gets through the first couple of rounds, it's going to be a very interesting fight because, you know, he, he, I think he can get, he, if he gets accustomed to your power, that's just not where you want him. You know, you need to keep him. If I was Daniel Dubois, I'd be moving off, I'd be shooting the jab. You know, I'd be varying the power up, I'd be touch, touch, and then bang, picking one out rather than hitting him hard all the time. Because he's, he's like a, a heavyweight Carl Froch. You know, it's like if you hit him hard every time, he's just going to become numb and immune to the power. <laughs> it's just that these guys are freaks. So you need to hit him downstairs, you know, vary the power, vary the speed, you know what I mean? Constantly moving, adjusting. And do I think Daniel Dubois has that ability? I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, he's definitely got the ability to say, "All right, I'm going to, I'm going to meet you head on. I'm going to whack with you." And he's got probably, arguably, the hardest puncher in the heavyweight division because he's he's just ridiculously heavy-handed. But if he doesn't land and he's trading up, you know, he's he's a, he's a young. He hasn't fully matured. He's not, you know, I mean, he's not um, he's he's not as seasoned. So, um, but yeah. I mean, it could go, could go either way. It's one of those ones, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited and looking forward to it. Well, now you've given us that extensive insight into both people. The fact that you, you've had Dubois in for sparring, you've trained Joe Joyce. You have to give me a prediction now. No. If you had one pound, and it's my pound, so you don't even care if you lose it, who would you put it on? Um, a draw. No, I. I don't want. I don't want to side with anyone, really. I don't want to side because look, there's an argument on either side, and I'm going to be that. I'm going to be Johnny Nelson. I'm going to sit on the fence, mate. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to sit there and just say, nah, nothing. <laughs> you still get away from me. I'm not going to give you a prediction. I've said there's an argument for either side. It's up to you. I know who your money's on. Who's my money on? Well, you told me off camera. What did I say? I'm not going to repeat it because I'm not a snitch, mate. <laughs> Shane McGregor, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social. Um, do always enjoy our little visits down to the lovely University of Kent. Shout out the University wow. of Kent. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic start. They, uh, it's Chris over there from the University of Kent. Always uh, super accommodating and uh, appreciate you coming down, making that arduous trip down to this terrible part of the world. Three hours to get here, by the way. And you get to listen to Ryan Elliott the whole way. Complaining about being grey at 22. Yeah. I had to buy him a McDonald's on the way, otherwise he wouldn't come. Oh, just Vasquez. Just get it off that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Wicked. Thank you for the interview once again. Thanks very much.